Shot glass flight, liquid courage. Yeah, you know what that means. This is all four shot glasses, nice little flight. And this is beginner laser project number 18. This is a three layer project made out of a piece of 16 inch square, eight inch plywood. Uh, for this project, I'm gonna be using the uh, Algo Laser Alpha, which I have sitting right in front of me here, using air assist and honeycomb board. The files are in light burn. They are downloadable to, to you for free. There'll be a link in the description or you can go on our website and you can download these files for free. You are welcome to make as many of these as you want and sell them, as many of them as you want. But please do not try to sell my design or give it away or, well, I guess you could give it away, but I prefer you not sell it. So with that said, we'll get into how this is made. I'll go onto the computer here. Everything's all laid out and they're all done at once. Okay, here we are in light burn, give you an idea of what this is gonna look like. Uh, I'm using a 16 inch square piece of eighth inch plywood, and this is done in three layers. My settings over here are for a 20 watt laser. That's what I'm using right here. If you have a 10 watt, I've put a note over here, if you download this file, to try 300 millimeters per minute at 100% power for the cut, 2000 millimeters per minute for the fill, and it's still at 50% power. Uh, you'll need to do a little bit of experimenting. Uh, every piece of wood is different, so it depends on where you get your plywood from. Yes, this could also be done with quarter inch plywood. You would need to change uh, your speed and power as required. You have to run some tests, but yes, you could also do this with quarter inch. Doing it with eighth inch because it's uh, easier and quicker for the beginner. So, you, no, you don't have to use three layers. However, three layers make, gives a little bit extra depth and ends up looking pretty neat. So now we'll get on to the laser. So as you can see, I have a honeycomb board on here. It helps with uh, preventing scorching. It also makes cutting easier. So this is a piece of eighth inch plywood. And depending on which side you want to use, and we'll get into that when we put the project together. Uh, this came from Homely Depot. And on this side, you've got this finish. And on this side, you've got this kind of bizarre finish but it, it makes some nice effects uh, so I'll show you when we assemble but for now I'm just going to cut it with this side up I have already set my focus because I already made a few of these so I'll get this set in here I'm working in absolute coordinates and starting from center that's how I do all my projects get this squared up now what I need to do is I will frame this to make sure everything is within my work area. And I have my framing speed set somewhat slow so that if I need to make a movement or adjustment, I don't have to chase the laser to do it. I can do it while it's framing. So far, everything's looking good here. Want to make sure we're not going to run off the edge or something like that. Well, as you can see, the entire project is on the board like it's supposed to be. Also make sure that your plywood is flat. You don't want something that's like boat or cupped or something that where the laser is actually going to catch on it. So make sure your pieces are flat. Okay, we're home. We're ready to start this. Now, it will do the offset fill first, and then it will do the cut. Always do your fill or engraving before you do your cut. Total time for the fill and cut is uh, 10 minutes and 12 seconds. Of course, we won't uh, video the entire thing, but we'll uh, come back to this from time to time. If you're doing this and thinking it skipped a letter, it will go back and do it just like that. So don't think your uh, project's messed up because it left a letter out somewhere. It'll go back and get it. I'm using offset fill rather than regular fill because it leaves a little bit better uh, engrave, I think, a little bit darker. It also takes a little bit less time. 
Okay, now we're starting into the next layer where it's actually going to cut the uh, pieces out. completed. It's just a matter of taking this off and taking everything out of it. Don't throw those away. Kids like to play with those. Plus you could actually engrave some kind of little thing on them or make little key tags or a small hole in it. Lots of things you can do with those cutouts. On your letter engraving you may notice some soot on there. Don't be tempted to rub that with your hand at all. You take a soft brush and just it'll come right off. You rub on that with your hand, you rub it down in the wood and then it'll look funky. So some assembly required and there's different ways we can do this. I'm going to show you what, how I've been doing it because I need to do a lot of them. So what I have here is an assembly jig. It's just four four penny finish nails. That way I can lay my pieces in here and it will put them in line where they belong and everything will line up perfectly push everything against the nails and everything lines up perfect and when you're doing a lot of them this is a big time saver if you're only doing one you don't need to go through this trouble although it will help you with the lining if you're using CA glue which is exactly what I'm going to be using here so first I want to talk about the finish here. You see on this one here, of course this one's been stained, I'm not going to stain this one, but I used the back side like this. Gives it kind of an interesting little texture back there. But it's up to you how you want to do it or whether your plywood's even going to be like that. Uh, this is coated with a couple coats of satin lacquer. Uh, you can use polyurethane. You could use uh, polycrylic. Just make sure you put some type of coating on it because if you're pouring shots that are cold, like so let's say you're using a Replement or Jägermeister and they're cold and you set them in here and it's hot and humid out, they're going to sweat and that's going to mess up your wood. So do put a coating on it. So let me get my CA glue out here and I'll show you how I do this. A lot of different brands out there. I'm using Miter Apple or whatever you call it there, CA100 and the AC100 Accelerant. Uh, accelerant, you don't have to use it, it just makes the job go faster. Uh, you don't have to use this brand. Titan Bond also makes a, a very good CA glue. So all we're going to do to do this is I will coat the back side of my middle layer, that's the one without the laddering. I'll just go mostly around the edges and don't go overboard here, a little goes a long way. I like to go around where the hanger is going to be bit around there and I'll go right down the side about a half inch from the edge little squiggles down here come back down the other side you don't need a ton of this on there and I'll put a little bit between the uh, glass, shot glass openings now I will take accelerant spray my piece here then now once you do this you only have a couple seconds so don't dawdle around and mess with it get it in there get it lined up and be done give it a good press and I'm ready to do the top one and the application of the glue will be the same don't get too close to the edge because you do not want squeeze out and you don't use an overabundance either. Spray this down with the accelerant.
And there it is. What kind of finish you want to put on this is entirely up to you. As you can see here, I stained this one. And then uh, coat it with lacquer. I'll probably coat this with lacquer as well because that dries fast. But uh, feel free to change, do whatever type of finish you like. Just make sure you do put a finish on. And if you're tempted to brush a finish on, make sure your first coat is spray and not brush. Because if you use a brush, you may pick up some of that soot down in there and you'll spread it over your project and it won't look very good. So always make that first coat a spray finish. Uh, definitely put a finish on because as I said, if you're using shots that are cold, they may sweat and that will mess up your wood. So a quick fun little project. Uh, doesn't require a whole lot of materials. It's just one 16 inch square piece of eighth inch plywood. Uh, I get my plywood at Home Depot, eighth inch plywood. It comes in four foot by eight foot sheets. Uh, and it's not all that expensive. Then I just cut it up into 16 inch squares and work with it from there. Because most of my lasers have a 15 and three quarter inch working bed. I do keep a few larger pieces for my extended lasers, but otherwise you can just take a whole sheet and uh, cut it into squares and use it as you need it. It's easy to store that way. Okay, if you get some that's warped or crooked or bowed or not flat, after you cut those 16 inch squares, stack them all up. Put something heavy on top of them and just leave them somewhere. If that spot happens to be humid, that's even better to help flatten them out. Uh, what I usually do is, after I cut a batch of them, I'll put them on the shelf back over on the other side of the shop here. I'll put a towel over the top, put a cement block on it, and leave it until I need to get into that stack. That way I always have some plywood I know is flat. So a little hint there. So again, this was laser beginner laser project number 18 on making shot glass flight. Uh, you could make it smaller if you wish. I mean, you could resize, you could change the text. You can do all kinds of things with it. Easy project. File is free. It can be downloaded. It's in the description where you can go to get it. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. And also the Algo Laser. This is the Alpha model. If you'd like to get one of those, I'm sure they'd be glad to sell you one. Be linked in the description for that. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.